You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Red Eye Raw. This one is going to have some follow-ups to some stuff I talked about previously. I'm not going to be repeating myself, I'm just going to be expanding on certain points I made in an earlier episode, as well as I'm going to be talking about some completely different things. This is going to have several topics, it's going to be one of those semi-less focused ones. It's all going to be about entertainment, though, and I know there's the whole coronavirus thing going on and all that crazy shit, but I don't want to talk about that. Everyone else is already talking about that, we already know what's up. Hopefully you're all doing well. Um, obviously I feel for anyone who's struggling because of this, um, luckily my job is an essential service, so things have been kind of unchanged for me for the most part, other than, you know, stores having restrictions and shit, but, uh, good luck to everyone, um, just stay strong, and, uh, we'll, we'll get through this, uh, fear-mongering is something I don't agree with, um, and while I do believe in being cautious, being careful, and taking it seriously, don't panic. It's, it's like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy says in large, friendly letters on the front. Don't panic. So, I'm going to be talking about my views on entertainment. Uh, oh, <laughs> that happened. And I'm going to be covering uh, a lot of things, like I said, that I've already kind of touched on. Um, but, uh, so, or if you remember a while back, I did one about why politics is killing entertainment. And again, that wasn't about politics itself, like any specific political view. It was about the broad term of just how politics and entertainment should not be you know, synchronous. They should not be one and the same. Like I said before, I do think that it's okay to put make political entertainment, but not all entertainment needs to be political. Uh, and I don't have to agree with a message to support something's right to exist, because I'm I ultimately think everything has a right to exist as long as it doesn't violate any laws. But we'll start with the expanding on stuff. Um, one thing that really drives me nuts is people who complain about companies doing things and then turn around and continue to still give those companies money. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You still want to support a company, by all fucking means do it. That is your right to do so. But when I have, like, I have friends, right, who also don't like Funimation, but they still shill out 70 fucking bucks for new Funimation box sets, and I'm like, really, dude? It's like, I personally have not bought a new Funimation thing since this whole thing started. And uh, I've, I've been less encouraged to do so with every fucking poor decision they make. And it's the same thing, you know, if I if I don't like a movie, I won't buy it. Same kind of concept. Like, it's, I get, yeah, there's a lot of anime series they release that I may like, but here's the thing. Uh, this is where it's going to probably spin off into another topic. I don't really care. <laughs> I really have not been that interested in a lot of modern anime releases. And if there's something I really do want, I'll just buy it used if it's a Funimation thing so that they don't get any of my money. There are still some anime companies I support, like Discotech and stuff like that, because as far as I know, they haven't done anything to merit me not. Viz Media has made some poor decisions, but nowhere near as many as Funimation, so at the time being, Viz Media is kind of a gray area for me, but if they start pushing an agenda within their translations and things, that's when I'll have a problem, because that's what Funimation does. Like, obviously, the whole divisive Vic Mignogna thing, and like I said, I don't care where you stand on it. I'm firmly, I stand with Vic. I support the guy. I don't care if you don't. I'm not going to get angry. That's your fucking prerogative. But in my opinion, the evidence points to his side. And even if it didn't, the behavior of a lot of the people involved in Funimation is inexcusable towards people who had no right for them to treat the way they do. And I'm not just talking about Vic, I mean the way they talk about fans. But again, that's a divisive issue. If you disagree with me, whatever, I don't fucking care. Um, but I saw some people were getting upset that Funimation was involved in some anime committees, like producing anime. Yeah, that's definitely something that I don't like. Um, they were not for any anime that I gave a shit about. It was shit like Fruits Basket and shit like that. So they're kind of you know, romancy slice of life comedy bullshit that I don't care about. So, I mean, ultimately, it's not going to affect me regardless. But uh, a lot of people are like, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll bitch and complain, and then they'll still go out and buy it. They'll say, oh, yeah, I fucking hate Funimation. They do all this horrible shit. They need to stop. And then they'll go fucking buy a limited collector's edition Funimation set. It's like, dude, that is why they are enabled to continue doing what they do. Now, I'm not saying you have to boycott it. I, I, I'd be against anyone saying that. Because ultimately, it's your decision how you want to spend your hard-earned money. But that's the choice I make in not buying anything from Funimation, at least not new. So we'll get back to anime in a minute, because there are some other things I want to talk about in anime that aren't so, like, divisive and related to that sort of issue. Uh, but for now, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, separating the art from the artist, which is something I feel like some people aren't able to do, which I am able to do just fine. Here's the thing. Like I said, it, this may sound contradictory, but if you'll allow me to explain, I will expand upon it and try to make sense of it and be consistent. So, like I said, I don't support Funimation, but that's not only because I disagree with what they think and say, it's because I disagree with the choices they made that affect the products they release. Had these choices not affected the products they release, 
that'd be a different story. Had they just stuck to making anime and dubbing anime and then having their own opinions and having their stupid little rants on Twitter and shit like that, I would have been fine. But obviously the Vic Mignogna thing was a big thing for me. Uh, but on top of that, they intentionally change dubs to have an agenda. You know, like they'll, they'll change a line uh, from something being called old-fashioned to being called misogynistic or some stupid shit like that. Um, but, uh, and again, this is for a series that I really don't care about. Like, I think it's from, like, Love Live or some shit. I don't care about Love Live. I don't care about any of that shit. It's not really my cup of tea. But it's the kind of shit where it's like, oh, they're changing all this stuff. And then they'll drop series because it doesn't meet their standards, even though they've done similar series before. Point is, it affects the product, and that's why I don't support them. There's other things I can support that don't affect the product. For instance, I love Key and Peel. I fucking love their comedy. But I won't buy Jordan Peele's horror movies because I think they're race baity garbage that are designed to push an agenda. And I understand those are popular, and a lot of people will like them and probably disagree with what I said about that. And that's fine. I'm, I, I get why those are popular. I see the appeal. But in my opinion, I see the appeal, Jordan Peele, bad, bad pun, but, um, no, I, um, I have no interest in them because they just seem like race-baity garbage to me. When Jordan Peele comes out and says that, you know, white people and black people should view, view this movie differently and white people should see how racist they are, I'm paraphrasing, of course, I don't think he used quite as heated language, but still. But ultimately, I love his comedy. Key and Peele was a good show, he did good on Mad TV. Keanu was kind of boring, but it was okay. Um, but I, I don't hate them as actors. I enjoy their comedy. Um, I just don't agree with their views, and that's fine. And that's why I don't like those movies, because I feel like those movies are pushing those agendas, which is why I don't watch them. Had those movies just been straight-up horror movies, and then they, they, they still push these agendas on the side, that's fine. I would have watched them. But I feel that that affects the product and makes it feel like it's trying to be this deep, like, look at... You know, how, how racism affects the... Which it really fucking doesn't at this point in time. Like, I, again, I'm not trying to get political, but it's... People make mountains out of fucking molehills. Like, people act like being called a name is equivalent to being enslaved or imprisoned, which it's fucking not. Um, but uh, people act like that's the same thing. And I understand better does not equal good, or does not equal solved, or whatever. But... Uh, I think that people exaggerate things, and they act like there's problems there that aren't. But again, I'm not going to try... I'm trying not to get too much into that. Point is, I can support different uh, artists and not agree with them, or or even necessarily like them. Like Victor Salva. I love Jeepers Creepers. One and two. Three was garbage. But Victor Salva is a, is a controversial lad, to say the least. Uh, if you don't know, he, uh... He did some things to uh, one of the underage stars of the movie Clown House when he made it, and that was, uh... That was a thing. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with what he did there, but ultimately I can still watch his movies and be just fine. Although I don't know if I'd watch Cloud House, because that movie has a lot of weird vibes. Um, because there's a lot of scenes that are questionable, given the fucking context of what happened behind the scenes. It's like, I could find out some guy was a fucking serial killer, but I could still enjoy their work. Um, it's, it's, you know, art from artist, and that's something I've always firmly believed in, is separating the art from the artist. And obviously there's some cases where that's not necessarily possible just because of how much of themselves they inject into the art and how much the art is reliant on their worldview. Which again is where I run into the issue with politics and entertainment because they push it. Another thing I want to bring up is there's a lot of like anime and entertainment news channels I watch. You know, like Hero Hey, Yellow Flash, That Umbrella Guy. Good, good guys, I enjoy their content. But... They push a lot of, like, exaggerated fear-mongering in a lot of their titles and thumbnails, too. For instance, Funimation's like, hey, we're on these anime production committees for, like, three different fucking anime. It's like, okay. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with that because you're probably going to try to push some agenda, but again, I'm not going to necessarily jump to that conclusion either. But I do find it kind of bad and clickbaity with some of their titles and thumbnails, because, like, so they're talking about that, right, with Funimation being on some anime production committee, whatever. But they title the video, like, The End of Anime, or Anime Goes Woke. J uh, fucking Funimation takes ownership of Japanese anime studio. I mean, I think you're being giving them a little bit too much credit. Like, yes, I think it is a concern to have them having any sort of creative input, because fuck Funimation, but... 
I think that you're exaggerating the fuck out of it when you're like, oh, they've taken ownership. Oh, this is the end of anime. It fucking makes me sick sometimes with the way they do their titles and shit. And on a side note, speaking of them, again, I'm not trying to throw shade at those guys because I enjoy what they do. Um, but some of them, like, they're, they're kind of the ones who do a lot of that weird censorship I was talking about, you know, where they, like, will censor out certain words because of the YouTube algorithm, right? And I get that, whatever. It annoys the hell out of me because they'll be like, well, they, they've they been described as you can see the term here, and they'll show it on the screen uh, and shit like that, which I find a little annoying, but whatever. But on top of that, they also, like, there's some of them that we'll talk about, like, Johnny Depp's recent drama with Amber Heard. They'll put the name Amber Heard in the title of the video, but then they won't say her fucking name in the video. It's like, dude, you put it in the fucking title. If you're gonna get demonetized for her name, it's already in the goddamn title. Why are you fucking... Why? But again, I'm not trying to throw hate on those guys, because I do enjoy some of their content. I don't watch all of their content, because they talk about a lot of shit I don't care about. Because, in all honesty, I don't care about a lot of modern anime. Um, and that's gonna be the topic I'm gonna talk about last on here today. Um, is modern anime. Like, so, for instance, something like My Hero Academia. I'll probably never review it, because everybody and their fucking grandmother has already talked about it. My Hero is suffering from the same symptoms as Attack on Titan, where it's a good anime that people will not shut the fuck up about, and it just gets overexposed, and frankly, I get kind of annoyed with it at this point. I haven't watched the new season of My Hero Academia at all. I've watched all the ones up to it, and I haven't watched the movies either. But frankly, My Hero Academia is nothing too special. It's like the same thing as fucking, like, Naruto, essentially. It's the same shit as every shonen anime ever made. In my opinion, One Punch Man is a way better superhero anime, and I haven't watched the second season of that either, and I know that, you know, people say that the animation on that is bad. I haven't seen it. I'm gonna give it a shot, probably at some point. I don't know. I'm behind on a lot of anime, in all honesty. Um, I'm currently watching through Naoki Urasawa's Monster, which I will be reviewing. That That's a fucking great show, which I'm sure a good chunk of people haven't heard of, and I'm sure a good chunk have, too, especially in my fan base, but I don't mean fan base viewers. I don't like to use that term, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I, frankly, My Hero just gets kind of overrated. It's just the same thing as any other shonen series. Like, every shonen series is the same, right? They start out with a young protagonist who's weak at first and then gets stronger and overpowered as the series progresses. All of them are the same now. Back in the 80s, you had shonen series where it was big muscle men who started out strong as fuck and only got stronger. But everything's kind of the same formula now, which is fine. It's enjoyable to, for its own, its own regard. It's just everything's kind of the same now. Especially when it comes to Jump. They don't even, like, kill off characters that often anymore. Like, very few characters, if any, have died in My Hero at the point I'm at. I've heard there was a big major death recently in either the manga or the anime. I don't know. Again, I have not kept up with it in the slightest, so forgive me on that. Now, I've been much more interested in going back and watching older anime, just because I feel like there was a lot more variety back then. Um, they weren't held to the same, like, uh, formula... I feel like in some regards they could get away with a lot more too. Back in like the 80s, like 80s anime is the shit. Like if you watch like 80s fucking OVAs, those shit are violent as hell. And maybe that's because they're OVAs versus TV series and OVAs can get away with a lot more in the first place. But you don't see as much stuff being just released as OVAs anymore. It's all TV series. And granted, you'll get uncensored versions released on the Blu-ray versions, but even by comparison, compared to some of the 80s shit they even showed on TV, it's got nothing on them. Like, the, the shit back then was fucking real. They didn't fuck around. But, yeah, I've rambled on for a bit here. Like I said, if there's anything you disagreed with me in this video on, that's perfectly fine. It's not my intention to be divisive or political or anything like that, because I, I fucking hate that shit. Um, I just, I just thought I'd voice my expanded thoughts on some points I brought up in a previous video and bring up some new ones. Um... It's, yeah, it, like I said, if you don't like something, don't support it. That's that's all I gotta say. Like, I mean, it's, it's your prerogative if you want to anyway. And I'm not saying boycott companies because they do one thing you disagree with. That's, that's a little bit over the top, I think. But, like, with Funimation, for instance, they've made multiple decisions that I don't agree with, and it affects the overall product. And that said, there's a lot of products they release that I wouldn't be interested in anyway, because frankly, I'm not interested in a lot of the Slice of Life romance stuff. I'm not interested in the generic shonen stuff. I'm certainly not interested in isekai shit. And if you are, that's great. If you if you enjoy that stuff, that's fine. Um, I just personally don't. Uh, I'm much more into the darker, more depressing, fucked up anime that's out there, which is why I kind of gravitate towards 80s and 90s anime. Um, I do like some of the vibrant, bright shit from the 70s, too, which is why I like 70s anime as well.
Not to mention the early 2000s had some really good stuff. Like you had Death Note, Elf and Lead, Monster. Um, again, Monster Review will come once I finish it. I'm about, I don't know, halfway through it. I'm on like episode 31, 32, something like that out of 74. So I'm, I'm close to halfway. Not exactly, but close. Uh, I also recently finished Doom Eternal. Fucking great game. I might do a review of that in the next little bit here. Um, there's a lot of other things I have planned here, obviously. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys have a good one. Stay safe during these fucking crazy-ass times. Uh, I hope to God shit starts go going back to normal soon. And again, if you disagree with anything I said, that's great. I respect you. I have no problem with that. Um, like I said, I have no problem with differing opinions. That's something I enjoy, because if we were all the same, it'd be fucking boring as shit, wouldn't it? And I don't believe in having an echo chamber, so if my viewers disagree with me, that's totally fine. Um, I'm not gonna get mad about it, because... I, like I said, I'm of the belief that you can still like someone and still get along with them, even if you don't agree with something they say, do, or believe in. But yeah, that's enough rambling. Toodles!